Hey, welcome back E7 fam to another how to play guide and in this one we'll be talking about the plague doctor himself Death dealer Ray as with all of my how to play videos I'll be going super in-depth and covering almost everything you could want to know about the character including things like stats skills some possible in-game equipment builds for you to try out and of course matchup knowledge for world arena if that's your thing so without any further ado Let's jump into Death Dealer Ray's stats. Death Dealer Ray is a Dark Soul Weaver of the Cancer Zodiac symbol. He shares a stat line with Destina. Taking a look at his stats, he has 621 attack, 775 defense, 6034 health, 100 speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. This translates to, well, below average stats in every category except two, defense and health. 775 defense is the second highest defensive score in all of Epic 7, and 6034 health is the highest health total for a Soul Weaver in Epic 7. Basically, despite the fact that this character does not have effectiveness for the skills we're going to talk about in the next section, he is still extremely tanky. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, all versions of Ray, as well as all versions of Charles and Straze, are voiced by legendary English voiceover artist Crispin Freeman. We've talked about him several times here on the channel. He is well known for voices such as Itachi Uchiha from Naruto, Sundowner from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Zelgadis from the Slayers franchise, which is actually probably the role that gave him his start, and of course, Kyon from my account's namesake, the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Not to be outdone, the Japanese voiceover artist responsible for Rei's voice is Toshihiko Seki, who voices characters such as Muzan from Demon Slayer, Iruka Sensei from Naruto again, and for my boomer anime fans out there, he is the voice of Duo Maxwell from Gundam Wing, as well as Moose from Ranma One Half. Do you smell that? That's the smell of death. Death Dealer Ray's S1 is Clinical Trial. It has a 1x attack multiplier. It is a single target attack with a 65 to 75% chance to sleep the target for one turn. A successful attack, meaning that the enemy does not dodge or evade, deals additional damage equivalent to 40% of injuries inflicted on the target. This skill, like most other skills that sleep the target, cannot trigger a dual attack because, well, that would kind of suck. You put them to sleep and then they just wake right up. Life or death, pick your poison. Death Dealer Ray's S2 is his signature skill, Anatomical Mutation. It has a 3 to 4 turn cooldown, depending on Malagora. It is a non-attack skill that grants an increased effectiveness buff and pestilence buff to all allies for 2 turns, and increases those same allies' combat readiness by 15 to 20%, depending on Malagora. Ah, a patient in need of treatment. Worry not, the doctor is in. As of the recording of this video, Death Dealer Ray is the only character that gives the Pestilence buff, which is undispellable, by the way. It reads, after attacking on the bearer's turn, inflicts Venom for one turn, and at the end of the turn, detonates Venom effects inflicted on the enemy. Essentially, it makes it so that all of your allies' attacks will grant one Venom stack on all of their moves. If a character has two attacks, for example, say Solitary of the Snow, then you can double up on that and get multiple Venom stacks, and you don't have to wait for them at the start of each turn because you detonate them, you cash in all the value, get all the injury right away. For those of you who do not know what Venom does, it says here at the start of the turn, suffers damage equivalent to 10% of max health and is inflicted with injuries proportional to the damage suffered. The Venom effect applies to heroes only. Basically, it is a poison stack that reduces a target's maximum health, but it only works on heroes, meaning that we can safely say Death Dealer Ray is a PvP only character, as you can't really use it in PvE. Death Dealer Ray's S3 is Cloud of Death. You acquire three souls upon use, and it has a five turn cooldown. It is a non-attack skill that dispels two buffs before there is a 70 to 100% chance, depending on Molagor, to sleep all enemies and inflict them with one Venom stat. Very powerful skill. If that wasn't enough, as you can probably guess, it grants an extra turn to the caster. The Dark Shroud of Death is coming over. I hope you find it comfortable. Oh. You'll make an excellent specimen. Cloud of Death used to be this really interesting skill that you had to set up via focus. 
It enabled a playstyle that was very slow and methodical, but also rewarding and fun. After Death Dealer Ray's rework though, Cloud of Death became an on-demand skill that you could use whenever. And that honestly makes it pretty debilitating. Like, this skill doesn't really let your opponents play the game. It's akin to things like Angel of Light Angelica's Judgment of the Angels, Lewis Sweet Talk, as well as a few others. Your opponent's options versus Cloud of Death are to have a high enough ER character to resist that can also cleanse, play a cleanser that's immune to Cloud of Death such as Mediator Kueric, or punish the extra turn or non-attack skill nature of this move. If they can't, well, you just press Anatomical Mutation, CR push your team, and proceed to be in control of the game from there. Even if your opponent has an option, simply pressing Anatomical Mutation instead of Cloud of Death and raining down injury on them puts enormous pressure on their health total. It doesn't really let them use their support skills to heal or buff because if they're not available, you can just use Cloud of Death later on and take over the game from there. With the enemy team slept, you'll want to use your turns not waking up key targets so that, that way they miss their turns. You can do this by using single target attacks on heroes that have low value turns, such as tanks or supports that can't really cleanse. You can also use other forms of control like stuns, combat radius pushbacks, and of course sleep like the one found on Clinical Trial. Basically, you want to keep the opponent in a vice grip, slowly drowning them in injuries until they finally explode from Ray's basic skill. Cloud of Death is perhaps one of the most downright frustrating, or dare I even say, toxic things to be on the receiving end of in all of Epic 7. Death Dealer Ray's Soul Burn for the cost of 10 souls raises the sleep chance on Clinical Trial from 75% chance at Max Mola to 100% chance. For when it absolutely has to be slept so that that way you can maintain that vice-like grip on the game, yeah, that's when you use it and it is a good Soul Burn. <laughs> Do you smell that? That's the smell of death. When it comes to Malagora priorities, you can kind of go whichever way you want, but at the end of the day, you need to have Cloud of Death maxed out for the percentage chance, Anatomical Mutation maxed out for the combat radius and the cooldown reduction, and also get the Clinical Trial to plus 3 for the effect chance. Probably best to go 3, 2, and then finally 1. But overall, no matter what you decide to go with in the order, again, you're going to need this character to at least plus 13. Like we talked about in the previous section, Death Dealer Ray used to be this very nuanced, slow, methodical, and fun character. He had a lot of diversity in the way you could play him, and he had quite a number of builds. After his rework, however, he's pretty straightforward. It's just a set it and forget it S3 in Cloud of Death to sleep the opponent, take an extra turn, anatomical mutation for a combat radius push, and then just go to town with sleeps and injuries. So again, a lot of that nuance is now kind of gone, and as such, he really only has one major build path with a couple of variations that I'm going to talk about in this section, and that's going to be on the speed set, but for completeness sake, I will include his older counter set build in this section as well. So let's just jump into it and take a look at what a standard Death Dealer Ray looks like. Primary set is going to be speed with a two-piece hit offset. For the alternative two-piece sets, you could play Immunity, Health, Defense, or Resistance based on your preference. If you want to go for Resistance, we'll talk more about that as the very next build. Taking a look at our desired stats, we have 1,237 attack. This is Death Dealer Ray's base attack with an I-90 weapon and the recommended artifact. Defense is 1,800 here, again, leveraging that amazing defense stat. And Health is 18k or higher if you can get it. Looking at the speed stat, 230 is where you really want to be. Some Death Dealer Rays go up to 240 or even 250. If you want to go really fast, we'll talk more about some of the sacrifices you can make in the third variation. Not a damage dealer, so we don't need critical hit chance or damage. And effectiveness is 100% at minimum. Ideally, you'd prefer on this version of the character to go to like 130 or 150. And if you have really, really impressive gear, you could shoot for even 200 effectiveness. So that way you can reach Soul Weavers. Taking a look at our right side gear here, 
I am on a health percentage necklace, but you could also use a defense percentage necklace if that works out for you. Ring is defense percentage, and again, you could use health percentage here. It just, whatever makes the math work. So either go health percentage necklace, defense ring, defense necklace, health ring. You could also go for an effectiveness ring if you so choose, if it has really good tank subs on it. Boots are speed to take turns in a timely fashion. As for artifact choice, this one is personal preference. I personally like Wondrous Potion Bot, and I believe it is the most common artifact that you see on the character, but Water's Origin is definitely a viable build as well. I know several friends that play it and really enjoy it. In fact, the Death Deal Array that is in draft mode has similar to my stat lines that I'm talking about here and is also on Water's Origin, so it's definitely an acceptable build. Mess around with the character and kind of see what you're really looking for. Obviously, I can't fit it on here, but Guardian Ice Crystals could also work because it's a different version of Water's Origin. I also have Celestine here in case you decide that you want to have some innate sustain on the character. I don't particularly think this artifact is that good on the character, at least for the speed set build. If you want to go for Celestine, I highly encourage the fourth build in the section, which is the counter set build. Taking a look at our per piece average here, we have 14% health, 7% defense, 12 speed, and 13% effectiveness. Let's talk about some variations from the standard build here. The first one I'm gonna talk about is a hybrid build. This is gonna be on a speed set with a resist two piece offset. This is essentially to have some form of effect resistance so that, that way maybe you could potentially resist to provoke from Conqueror Elias at the start of a fight or maybe like a stun from Unbound Knight Arwell. That's kind of the logic here. There is a similar version to the standard build that goes all in on effect resistance with no effectiveness. I have seen that, but I don't personally recommend it. It's essentially the standard build, but instead of having effectiveness on the character, you maybe only play like 35 to 50 effectiveness and go for like 150 plus ER. I think this one's a little bit better here. The one I'm going to talk about this hybrid build where it's like half effectiveness, half effect resistance. As always, the alternates here are going to be immunity, health, defense, or hit. But this hybrid build, I have seen some success with it. A uh, friend of the channel, Valky, this is the kind of build that he plays on his Death Dealer Ray. And I know that other players like Divine have also picked up this style of Death Dealer Ray. So if it's something that you're interested in, having a little bit of resistance to stuns and whatnot, then this is going to be the build for you. Desired stats, attack is the same. Defense is a little bit less at 1700 here. Health is still the same at 18k. If you can get more, I encourage you to do so. Speed is a little bit less than the 230, 240 range like we talked about the standard build. It's 220. Again, defense and speed a little bit lower here in order to make some concessions to get that effect resistance. Effectiveness is still 100%, but if this is too high for you, try like 85. I think having like an 85 effectiveness split with 100 ER or like an 85-85 split is probably the floor for this, and it can work depending on what level of play you are actually at. Taking a look at the right side gear here, necklace is still the same at health percentage with defense percentage as a potential for the offset. Ring is effectiveness here, but you could also choose effect resistance, HP percentage, or defense percentage. It depends entirely on the subs on your gear, and boots, as always, are going to be speed. Artifact here, I have Wondrous Potion Ball because again, that is my preference for all builds. If for some reason the character gets stunned, I find it much better for him to be able to snap out of it with Wondrous Potion Ball and actually execute on his game plan. But I think if you have high effect resistance, things like Water's Origin and Guardian Ice Crystals are kind of better options. And then I have Celestine here. Again, I think it's best on the counter set build, but for some people who just don't want to play a Soul Weaver without some form of sustain, it is still there. Taking a look at your per piece average, it's 14% health, 16% defense, 10 speed, and then some combination of effectiveness or effect resistance here. You can see it's 7% average for the effectiveness with 13% for the effect resistance. Moving on to the next variation of the standard build, it is a speedy disruptor build for Death Dealer Ray. This is something that I've seen more like Red, for example, play, where it's a little bit faster, you know, probably 250, 260 speed range. And the whole point of it is to get that really early bridge where maybe you already have turn one locked up and you can go very quickly into a sleep anatomical mutation combo and take over the game from there. So if you're really just trying to slam the door on your opponent as fast as possible, then this is probably the variation for you. Basically, if you're somebody who wants to play aggressive and use him kind of like an Angel of Light Angelica, instead of a more slow, methodical carry, then this is going to be the build for you. Primary sets, speed hit like the previous one, same two-piece all sets. Looking at the desired stats, attack is still the same. Defense here is 1588. 
I believe this is simply just the character on a defense percentage ring with uh, an I-90 body and his base actual defense here. Health is still 18k because it's the most important stat. Just I want to have him be as hard to kill as possible. Speed is 260 here, but you could play like 250. 270 is probably also possible. The highest I've ever seen is 280, but it really sacrifices those bulk stats. Uh, I think 260, 255, somewhere around there. That's probably where you want to be if you're trying to play Death Deal Array as a bridge. This does come with some kind of uh, issues, though, because most Mediator Quirks are around 230, 240. So you're almost always going to go ahead of them. So that kind of becomes a bad matchup for you. And I'm not going to really touch on that specifically in bad matchups. It should be kind of known that Death Deal Array isn't particularly the best against cleansers overall. Critical hit chance and damage are exactly the same because it's not a damage dealer. Effectiveness is 100%, 85% is the floor, so you can get a little bit less effectiveness if you're really just trying to go for that speed. This is, again, not my cup of tea for a build, but it is definitely one that people play out there. Looking at the right side gear, health percentage necklace and defense percentage ring, like I said before, but there are alternatives as you can see. Boots are still speed. Artifacts are exactly the same choices for all the same reasons. I think this one's probably gonna be a little bit squishier, so. Water's Origin, Guardian Ice Crystals might be a better option for you. Looking at the per piece average, 14% health, 13% effectiveness, 18 speed, by the way. So yeah, this is really a speed demons thing. But to compensate, there's no real extra additional stats here. So it's basically just pick your fastest speed pieces and hope it's got some health and some effectiveness on it. If it doesn't, you might have to lean into something like an effectiveness percentage ring. The final build I want to talk about in this video is an outdated one, but it's still, in my opinion, a pretty good one, and that is the counter set build. This is what most people used to play on Death Deal Array before his rework because, well, he was a focus character and he needed all the help he could get in order to stack up his S3, Cloud of Death. Nowadays, after the rework, though, speed is kind of generally accepted to be quite a bit better, but who knows? As of the recording of this video, that's what it is, but maybe in a year from now, we're all back to counter set DDR, so why not include it for completeness sake? And again, it's not like it's bad. There are definitely some people who are playing it now as of the recording of this video that are pretty high up on the ladder around the Emperor level. For example, Mr. Fantasia himself, Azalea, who is an excellent E7 YouTuber, plays counter set on Death DLRA. So I've definitely seen it. It's definitely still viable. It's not something that is all that bad, in my opinion. Taking a look at our primary sets, we're on a counter set with a two-piece hit set. As for alternative two-piece sets, the usual suspects do apply here, including immunity, health, defense, and of course resist. So if you want to go for like a hybrid variation of Death Deal Array on counter build, where you go for like 100 effectiveness, 100 ER, you are welcome to do so. Looking at our desired stats, attack is still the same. Defense and health are 18 and 18k respectively, like you'd expect from a standard build, and speed is about 200. You could go less, around like 185 or 190 speed, in order to get more health, maybe more effectiveness, try and squeeze in some effect resistance, I leave that to you. Effectiveness is 100%, which I think is kind of the floor, well, 85 I guess would be the floor, but 100 is kind of the lowest I really would want to play. 130 to 150 would be the higher end, unless you have really insane gear, in which case you can try to chase 200 in order to tag specific soul weavers, for example. And then effect resistance, I have 0% here, but if you decide to go for the two-piece resist set, go for that hybrid, you are welcome to do so. Again, I'd recommend trying going for 100 and 100. I know that there are certain players out there like Elfmage who think that you should probably go either all in on effectiveness or really high on ER with very minimal effectiveness, but that's up to you. I leave that to you to decide what to do. Taking a look at our right side here, health percentage necklace, ring is defense percentage, but again, you kind of have a lot of flexibility. You could still go defense percentage on the necklace, HP percentage on the ring, effectiveness on the ring, ER on the ring. If you want to go for the hybrid split, I'm still leaving that choice to you. Boots, as always, are speed because, well, he's kind of dirt slow without them, especially when you're not on a speed set. Artifact here is Celestine. I think this is the build that has the absolute best synergy with that artifact every time you get a counter. Well, then obviously, yes, we are going to get some healing, get some sustain, which makes the character that much more annoying. And people really aren't going to want to swing into you after anatomical mutation. Well, because if you get a counter, then potentially that's a sleep, uh, some venoms, a detonate. It's a lot of value. So if your opponent is trying to play a 
game plan where they're not trying to kill Death Deal Array in one hit with something like, say, maybe Save Your Odd in, then I think counter is kind of advantage if it's kind of a mid-speed versus mid-speed or a slow team versus a slow team, which is why, again, I think it is still pretty good. Looking at the per piece average, 14% health, 7% defense, 11 speed, and then your choice of 13% effectiveness or ER, depending on how you decide to split the stats. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge. If it's not obvious, anatomical mutation and pestilence are core to Death Dealer Ray's gameplay, meaning he's really good with characters like Urban Shadow Shu and Sharoon that already have built-in injury into the kit. It just makes everything that much simpler for you to pick up kills with his S1 clinical trial. After that, you probably want to be pairing him with characters that have very high frequencies of AoE attacks. Since Pestilence provides Venom on each target it hits, characters like Solitary of the Snow and Bellion are great options. Finally, the worst thing that could happen to your Death Dealer Ray is that he gets one shot from characters with really strong single target capabilities. So characters like Unbound Knight Arwell as well as Crimson Armin are also really, really good. Arwell gives you some degree of control with her stun, while Crimson Armin gives you not only immunity, but the most amount of raw mitigation. Just like with teammates, good matchups is also a very similar story. You want to bring Death Dealer Ray into characters that Pestilence is really good against. So think of health scaling bruisers like Lethe and Apocalypse Ravi. That last one in particular is pretty important. Apocalypse Ravi used to be a mainstay of competitive Epic 7, but is almost seen nowhere nowadays, and that's largely because of how powerful characters like Death Dealer Ray are against the character. Tanks that have carry potential, such as Yulha and Last Rider Kraut, are also not particularly good against Death Deal Array for the same reason. If you hit them with a ton of injury, well, then things like Symphony of Agony and Mobile Weapon Siegfried don't really have that much of a game impact. Also, characters that get hosed by Cloud of Death and its ability to remove buffs as well as put characters to sleep is particularly potent against characters like Remnant Violet and Savior Auden. Remnant Violet gets his dodge buff stripped, which makes him incredibly easy to deal with, and save your Auden being slept, well, you kind of have a 100% chance to hit her due to those mechanical changes that we had just a few months ago. Finally, let's talk about bad matchups. Moon Bunny Dominial and Dragon King Sharoon are two pretty obvious answers. Cloud of Death is the main thing that makes Death Dealer Ray scary, but it does give you an extra turn, which allows Moon Bunny to get not only skill nullifiers, but immunity on her team, which is very, very strong. Dragon King Sharoon, also very strong against the character. She's pretty much designed to deal with the sleep on Cloud of Death. You also have characters like Eternal Wanderer Ludwig and Commander Pavel that I have here. And that's not because these specific characters counter it, but more that these are the hallmark characters of Cleave. Death Deal Array isn't exactly the fastest. Yes, we did have a somewhat fast bridge in the character build section, but the character in general is not blazing fast and one of the best ways to deal with him because he's very strong against slow methodical teams is to just simply blow him out of the water with a cleave composition and again Ludwig and Pavel are basically hallmarks of that. Finally I have Angel of Light Angelica here as well as Little Queen Charlotte. Angel of Light Angelica is also pretty good against Death Dealer Ray. If you give unbuffable to the entire team well then anatomical mutation doesn't really give the pestilence buff and that completely puts a damper on most of Death Dealer Ray's game plans. Sure he can sleep you but uh, not having the injury or the bonus damage does end up making it so you might be able to overtake him in the long run. And then Little Queen Charlotte, while she is slow and can very easily be slept and picked apart by Death Dealer Ray, it's the looming threat of Will of La Mer that it makes her so dangerous. The fact that it can one-shot Ray if you don't have mitigation is particularly really potent against him. This is also true of Savior Auden, who I highlighted in the good matchup section. That one can potentially also go south if the enemy team is well prepared for you with things like, say, Mediator Quaric or another Cleanser. So that's why I wanted to highlight it. Also, Little Queen Charlotte, remember, immunity on judgment. So she might not accumulate too many Venom stacks. And that's going to do it for how to play Death Dealer Array. If I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. And if you really enjoyed the video, please consider leaving it a like or subscribing to the channel. If you want to see more how to play videos in this same style, there should be a playlist on your screen now. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.